Hello and a very warm welcome to our series of webinars and um, supporting you to showcase your nursing brilliance by entering our RCN Nursing Awards. My name is Elaine Cole and I've been loving working on the RCN Awards for nearly 10 years now and it's fair to say that as a team we're really passionate about giving nurses a platform to show what they're doing and in those 10 years it's never ceased to amaze me quite what nurses are achieving and quite what they're doing to make a difference to people's lives from from conception to end of life and just about everywhere in between and it's a sheer diversity of what nurses are doing which is completely mind-blowing and um, whether it's young supporting young people in prison delivering sexual health projects to sex workers in the in their own homes or even supporting the well-being of children by supporting dads to be better dads. The depth and breadth of nursing um, knows no bounds. And it feels more important than ever to showcase that this year. We want to help spread the learning from the pandemic and, and acknowledge the hard, hard work. But we have 15 categories and we want to recognise all the other amazing work as well that's been going on in all of the specialties um, where nurses are. So we know that there are lots of nurses who have something important to share, but they hesitate. Every year, hundreds begin the entry process, but for some reason they stop, they hesitate. And we absolutely know from the entries we receive that they do not reflect the amazing work being delivered by black and Asian nurses. So what we're trying to achieve with these webinars is we want to break down some of the um, barriers that might be um, experienced by nurses. We want to demystify the process and show how supportive and inclusive um, the awards journey is. And added to that, we want to give you some tips on how to make your awards entry stand out, because we want more of you to have the confidence to shout loud and proud about what you do for people in your work. So our speakers this evening include Ruth Oshikanlu, a longtime awards judge. Um, the last time Ruth ran a workshop for us on this topic, one of the attendees actually won an award. You will also hear from Giselle Padmore-Payne. She won our Child Health Award last year for her work supporting young people with sickle cell or and th or thalassemia to um, transition to adult services. Sandra Bennett is our Sandra Bennett is our third speaker. She won our leadership. She was a leadership finalist in 2018, um, and she's been working with us ever since at different events and conferences and on different programs. Um, then finally, um, to kick off our question and answer discussion at the end. We will be hearing from Tara Matare, who was our Nurse of the Year in 2019. So there will be a panel discussion, as I said, uh, in the last half an hour or so. And thank you for everybody who has already submitted their questions. Um, but if you do have anything you would like to ask any of our speakers, please use the Q&A box and we will come to this at the end of this session. So before I hand over to um, our speakers, I just wanted to quickly outline some of the benefits of entering the awards. I feel passionately that what makes um, the RCN Nursing Awards different is our commitment to and our investment in showcasing and sharing that practice as widely as we can. It's, it's not just about winning. Just entering the award can be a gateway to many different opportunities. And even if you're not shortlisted, the team of editors at RCNI's journals and online, they read the, all, every single entry that comes in and we often contact entrants to feature their work afterwards. If you're a finalist, we showcase your project in our publications um, and at the awards itself. You automatically become part of our Nurse Awards Network, which RCN calls upon to present at our events, webinars and seminars. And even more recently on our Nursing Standard podcast, we send out press releases on all our finalists and they enjoy coverage um, in local media within their specialty. Um, and we work with the Trust Comms team. So your profile is raised within your organisation. 
Some finalists will um, feature in our news pages, others might write opinion pieces for us. And we do support a lot of our finalists to um, write peer reviewed clinical articles for that section. Obviously, it's lovely to win and our category winners, they have the prestige of a title. They see their profile raised nationally and internationally. Uh, we include an in-depth article on their work and most actually make a front cover as well. But most importantly, what all these things add up to is we are helping you to share what you have been doing to improve people's lives. In fact, sometimes whole communities lives. And so others can learn from that and even more people can benefit in the future. So that's what we would like to do for you. Um, so how do you do it? Now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Ruth Oshikanlu. Ruth, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Can you hear me? Yep. It's still saying on mute. I've unmuted. OK, good. So I'm Ruth Oshie Kanlu. I'm a nurse, midwife, health fist. I'm also one of the judges on the RCNI Awards. Uh, I'm a nurse entrepreneur and a curator of uh, the Nurses and Midwives Talk, showcasing the difference nurses and midwives make to those they serve, especially during a very challenging global pandemic. I'm a mentor and coach and I love people to thrive. I believe we're all brilliant as nurses and that's why we're having this webinar. And by the end of this uh, webinar, I want all of us to commit to letting the world know how brilliant we are. So I'll kick off, I'll be kicking off the session and as Elaine said, uh, we'll be joined by previous winners and finalists. I want the session, we all want the session to be really interactive. So please ask questions. We'll be talking how, about how to get visible, how to get heard, how to make an impact, but most importantly, how to use the RCNI awards to be seen, heard, and make that impact. Next slide, please, uh, Rosie. So this is all the things I believe I, I do as a nurse and a midwife. And the reason why I'm highlighting this is if I'm uh, encouraging you to showcase your brilliance. I'm not I'm asking you to do something I do all the time and I have to be the example. This is a skill I have acquired. It's not innate. Especially as I was raised not to blow my own trumpet and we know what the there is an echo on my line. I don't know if everyone else mute. Yes, okay. it's just there's an echo. If is everyone muted? Rosie, is it possible to mute everybody and then I could unmute myself? Oh, good. OK, so I've had to learn to blow my own trumpet and I would encourage you to blow yours too. When we go to a concert, everyone in, an, in the orchestra is playing their instruments to the best of their ability. If they don't, we'll probably be asking for a refund. So please blow, learn to blow your own trumpet and I'll be talking through the benefits of doing that and how the RCN uh, can, uh, awards can help you do that. Please move to the next slide, please. So as I said, I have won 16 health and business care business awards. So I'm not asking you to do anything I haven't done myself. And for me, I see it as marketing, marketing the difference we make. And if you have any doubts about the difference you're making to those you serve, just ask them, ask your colleagues that will tell you the difference you're making. So it will, it's time to showcase our brilliance, but we have to be in it to win it. So I'll be talking you through the process. Next slide, please, um, Rosie. So these are the some of the things I have achieved along the way because we do great work. I do make a difference to those I serve and why not? Why can't we market, advertise nursing, midwifery, health visiting, all the, the beautiful skills we have and our talents. This was when I got the MBE. Next slide, please. 
and my doctorate because we need to get comfortable with being visible, with being audible because we make an impact every day. So how do you do it? Next slide, please, Rosie. I believe if I can, that you can too. But, and that's why I'll be talking through, I'll be sharing with you what has enabled me to get to where I am today so that you can do the same. Next slide, please. So I don't know if you've heard about Simon Sinek. He's a renowned motivational speaker and he, he, he has advised that we start with why. Our why is our purpose, our motivation, what we believe. And you have to start with why before you enter the awards. What do you want to set out to achieve? Why are you getting into entering into the awards? Because that's what you start with and then you build on. After finding your why, your purpose, then the next step is how, the process, the specific actions that you will take to realize your why, that purpose. And then you move on to the what, the result, what you do, the result of that why and the proof. So let's see how this works. I'll start with why. Next slide, please. So I enter awards because caring is my business. It's my business because I care about nursing. I do what I do because I care. If I don't care about something, I don't make it my business and because of that I make sure that I get seen, I get heard and I demonstrate the impact I'm having. So what's your why? Are you making nursing your business? Do you care about nurses? Do you care about those you serve, your patients? Do you care about your teams? Because I care, you will see me. You will see what I care about. You will hear me. You will hear what I care about. You will see and hear about the impact I'm making. I will make an impact on you and I will infect you so you can make an impact on others. So can you see how that starts to shape what your um, awards entry looks like? Do you care about what you do, the difference you make? Do you try and make it easier? Do you show your innovation? the skills, the expertise, the impact you're making, especially during a challenging year working through a pandemic. Next slide, please, Tara. Oh, not Tara. Where did I get that from? Rosie. So why, do, why be visible? Because often we do great work and we hide our light under a bush, bushel and as a result, the world, world becomes darker. But when we're all shining our bright lights, our brilliance, the wor world becomes more brighter and lighter. During the glo uh, global pandemic, you have made a difference to those you served. Your patients, your clients, your colleagues have seen it. But who else needs to know? How will you be seen? Where will you be seen? Those are questions you need to start asking and how will you be seen? Next slide, please, Tara. Um, I keep calling you Tara, Rosie. Why speak up? In order to be heard, we need to voice what we say. We cannot be silent about the difference we're making. When we speak up, it will give us confidence. Confidence comes from doing. I remember the first few awards I entered. When I didn't get selected, I was like, oof, what happened? Why wasn't I selected? Then I had to tweak my application to ensure the difference I made stand out. All of us should have a unique selling point. The way we do things different, unique to us. Our patients feel it, our clients feel it, the teams we work with feel it. It also promotes awareness. As I said, entering awards is marketing nursing, marketing nurses, marketing the difference we make. We also speak out to call out bad practice and that's how we get more innovative. 
to inspire others. And of course, the more we stand out from a crowd, the more people take notice. But we also can start a movement. But it's not easy. It's going to stretch us. It's going to take us out of our comfort zones. Next slide, please, Rosie. So how comfortable are you with being uncomfortable? When I first started um, getting visible, getting audible, I had to get right out of my comfort zone. I'm quite introverted in, you know, as a person, but I then had to realize, Ruth, you need to get up, get over yourself. It's not about you, it's about the difference you make. So how are you gonna stretch yourself? Ensure you get out of that comfort zone, get a mentor to support you. And over the next, the course of the next hour, you'll be hearing from nurses that have been there, done it put themselves outside, got out of, their, out of their comfort zones, but also they'll be sharing how they did that and the difference it has made. And I think it's my final, no, next slide please, um, Rosie. So how, how can you use the RCNI awards to demonstrate the impact you're making to be seen and to be heard. I'm just going to wheeze through the next few slides. Rosie, please, next slide. And these are nurses that have done that. Nurses just like you. Bla Oops, sorry. <laughs> just like you. So this is Dorcas Guata, who is an RCNI award winner. Uh, she's a mental health nurse. And the benefits of getting out of that comfort zone is that she secured media coverage. She was a cover feature of, of, of a nursing standard. She got a TV interview with Kate Garraway, and that's all marketing. You know, she's highlighting the difference we're making. So our department gets noticed, our trust get noticed, and we too get noticed. The next slide, please. Then Tara is on to, with us today, the RCNI Nurse of the Year 2019. And that's a coach. She won two categories, actually. She won the leadership uh, category, but also was the Nurse of the Year. And she's been a nurse for over 25 years. And that's a quote from her. You're going to hear from her from the horse's mouth today. Next slide, please. Then Giselle Padmore, too, was a, an RCNI award winner, the child health category, um, just last year. So she, too, will be talking about her experiences. Next slide, please. And Rohit Sagu, an RCNI uh, awards finalist in 2019, a founder of the British uh, Sikh Nurses. And he's a child health uh, lecturer. Next slide, please. Rosie. And you'll be hearing from Sandra too, uh, an RCNI awards finalist in 2018. And the beauty is you do not have to win to get featured. Sandra too was a cover girl with her team and uh, wrote an article, um, did a, delivered a podcast and has had numerous speaking engagements from the experience. So even if you don't win, it still gives you exposure. It still markets your your um, department and the difference you make. And I think it's the last slide next. So I believe we are awesome as nurses, but you have to believe it too. So I'm going to leave you with some homework to do in between at the end of the webinar. I believe you're awesome too, but you have to believe it. I would love you to get into the habit of describing how awesome you are. So after the webinar, later during the week, it's a habit. Remember, you need to do it on and on and on and on and on. Get used to looking for your awesomeness, but also speaking about your awesomeness, because through confidence, you will get, through doing, you will get confident. And before we go, last slide, sorry. <laughs> I just, there is, so I spoke about the Nurses and Midwives talk. This is a project I started last year and I've showcased the talent of about 333 nurses and midwives today. 
all of the nurses are speaking today and all of the nurses I showed their pictures have all given an, a video interview. So if you want to learn how to demonstrate the impact you're making, I will send a link later how to access this interviews to learn the difference you're making, the words they use so that you can use them in your entry. So I'll share the link with you later. Thank you, Rosie. Thanks very much, Ruth. Um, fantastic and imp inspiring presentation as ever. Um, I think we move quickly on to um, our next speaker, Giselle Padmore Payne, um, the winner of our Child Health Award last year. And she's going to tell you um, about the project which won her the award. Um, it's never been more important. So over to you, Giselle. Hi, good evening everyone. Um, thank you for having me, Elaine and Rosie and the RCNI. I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you to Ruth um, for your presentation as well. Um, I'd like to say welcome to you all and I'm super excited to be sharing my project with you and to tell you a little bit about what I do. Next slide, please. So I work at King's College Hospital and um, I am a Roald Dahl Marvelous Children's Transition Clinical Nurse Specialist. I know, what a mouthful. But Roald Dahl is actually um, the charity that helps some of my young adults and helped me to achieve some of the goals that I have aspired to achieve. Next slide, please. So this is the beginning. In the beginning, I um, qualified 17 years ago as a registered pediatric nurse. And um, I worked at different hospitals in London, so the Evelina, UCLH, and then I'm at King's College Hospital. So I started at King's College Hospital in October um, 2016, all bright eyed and bushy tailed and ready for many challenges. And there were many challenges when I started. There still are a lot of challenges, but I'll talk a bit about those. So my aim from day one was um, to make a difference to the young people who are in the service and help them to maneuver the NHS system. Next slide, please. So my role is um, predominantly the pediatric um, transition from pediatric to adult services, I should say. And basically it's the process of helping young adults move from the pediatric service to the adult service smoothly and enable them to maneuver the system because as you know the NHS is such a complex system. Over the years working with young adults I have found that a lot of young adults got lost to follow up, um, didn't come to their appointments, um, were not compliant with medication so um, it sparked an interest so I wanted to know how I could help them, how I could assist both them and their families to come to terms with moving from the pediatric to adult service. So I did a lot of research into the role and I started by looking at some generic paperwork and um, policies from the Department of Health. So I used that to kind of um, look at what we could use to introduce the transition service at King's College Hospital um, and then we tailored it to suit our, um, our patients um, within the service. So the patients that I look after um, particularly are those with sickle cell and thalassemia. So we wanted to have a holistic approach, so I needed to look at what they would need socially as well as emotionally and their emotional well-being and, you know, physically as well. So things like planning um, ongoing support during after their transition process um, started and began and, you know, to the end as well when they went across to the adult service is one of the things that I looked at in depth and um, also wanted to accommodate um, the development developmental changes for young adults. So work quite closely with the psychology team as well. Um, and then of course I got involved in um, national program for Ready Steady um, Go and the transition improvements team. So we sort of looked closely at introducing Ready Steady Go to other hospitals as well. Next slide please. So part of me being able to achieve the things that I have done so far um, I listen to the young adults and their family members and I get an idea of the things that they are worried about or they're scared about and over the years that I have worked with the young adults it keeps coming out the same themes over and over. So things like being scared of transition, needing reassurance, 
wanting to have um, a space where they can feel comfortable and be around other young adults as well. They wanted to feel reassured. They wanted to um, have someone that they can like um, go to a named worker, like a transition nurse or an adult nurse that who knew them, who knew what they would require when they were in the transitioning process. So we worked really hard with um, NHS elect and Dr. Chakravarti, who's one of the consultants at King's, she's very keen and has a keen interest in transition. One of the things you have to do is get someone on board who has the same goals and aspirations as you do. That would make life a lot easier, not only for you, but for the patients, for the service and for the things that you're trying to achieve as well. Next slide, please. So um, based on the NHS elect research, it was a small qualitative audit. We were able to pull some themes from there and I was able to take it forward to board meetings, to other um, like um, teams and medical teams, surgical teams, anywhere that the patient might be um, presenting in the hospital. So the things um, I started to forge links, I got link nurses who would um, then be advocates for the young adults who came into hospital. I got um, other nurses who wanted to be link nurses who would teach other nurses, junior nurses, junior doctors who were coming in about sickle cell and thalassemia as well. Because I believe if you have um, other healthcare professionals who know as much as you do in your specialty, the care that they deliver will be to the best standard possible. Next slide, please. So other things and how I achieved my aims as a clinical nurse specialist, I looked at things like um, reducing the mortality and morbidity rate. Um, unfortunately, young adults between the ages of, um, I would say 18 to 30, they're the ones more at risk of um, being non-compliant, um, disappearing from the system, and you know, often presenting or representing, coming into resus um, and Unfortunately, they're the biggest age group that um, can lose their life due to all the non-compliance and loss to follow up. So that is something that I wanted to look at and to improve. I wanted to improve. Um, I wanted to improve the DNA rates. I wanted to make life better for the seriously ill children and their families. So um, I started to share pathways across the trust um, with other specialties as well. And then um, so happened that the chaos team, um, which is the King's Adolescent Outreach Service, um, I started working with them. So together we were able to spread, um, was able to spread the word about transition across um, the King's and other pathways as well. So we were able to share pathways. We became flexible and contactable. So we liaise with the chaos team um, and we, we sort of work um, conjointly with them. So we um, raise awareness. Um, we sort of provide education across the trust. So when I started um, six months into that role, I started an RCN accredited course as well, which um, is widely attended. Next slide, please. So the RCN accredited course is something that I'm very, very proud about. Um, it's basically a course that teaches um, any healthcare professional within the trust, within the South Thames network or anyone who's interested about sickle cell and thalassemia, but also being mindful of the transition practices that they need to adhere to or help the young adult with. We sort of form um, patient support groups, transition workshop, YouTube videos, which you can have the link to later on. And then, of course, I am um, involved in so many other networks and so to try and raise the profile, educate as much people as I can about sickle cell and thalassemia and, of course, transition and the transition processes. Because I always think the more people I can educate about this, the more people would, would be able to um, provide better care for young adults and their families. Next slide, please. So this is the care plan that we introduced for young adults and it has made a huge difference to the young adults who present into ED. If you imagine we have young adults who present into ED departments and it's out of hours, it's um, the, the on-call team is not aware of what they should be having. So this protocol has made a huge difference and I've had lots and lots of feedback from patients and their families 
it empowers them and if the um, staff nurse who's looking after them as an agency nurse or doesn't know the system, they can give them a copy of their own care plan and say, this is what I should be having. This is my condition. I have sickle cell. Everything they need to know about their condition, the treatments that they need is actually on this care plan. And it's one of the things that I'm most proud about. Next slide, please. So this is just um, a picture I thought I would share with you about um, the transition group. So the staff members that I have and I work with, they're very, very good. They give up a Saturday and they come into the trust with me. So the psychologist is there, the adult nurse is there, the welfare officer, myself and the consultant. And we have these transition workshops where we've had magnificent feedback. The parents and the young adults have said what a difference it's made to them. They get to get um, a tour of the hospital. They get to see where they'll be going if they get admitted into the adult service and then they feed back that they're not so scared they're not so worried about being admitted they have an idea of what to expect and it really helps to boost their confidence as well enables them to speak up and to be um sure about what they should be receiving next slide please so things other things that i've done um and this is because I've had such an interest and really wanted to raise the profile, not only at King's, but across the country and across other hospitals, networks and so on. So things like um, presenting at universities, so Kingston University, King's College Hospital. I, um, I'm an article reviewer for red cell disorders as well with the RCN. I'm a mentor to junior nurses and pre-registered nurses. Um, teaching in the emergency department, which is very crucial. I believe if you're an expert in something, you should share your knowledge, you should encourage others to be like you, so that way you are sure that your patient will be receiving the best care possible. Things like engaging with the NHSI England um, transition, um, transition support group and steering group, I'm a member of that as well. And then I'm an advocate for the Roald Dahl charity and they have been really helpful in helping me to get the, some of the notions and ideas there about transitions out. And of course, being a part of the all party parliamentary group as well, where you're, you go to parliament and you're able to put things forward and things that might help improve patient care as well. Next slide, please. So I believe all nurses are superheroes, hence this picture. And I think we should be recognized for the hard work that we do as a nurse. And I think Ruth was really right. You don't go around blowing your own trumpet and I think um, having the experience of winning the RCNI award has made a huge difference to my career and give me like it sort of helped to boost the confidence that I have to speak about the things that I do because it, it is important to be able to express what you do and to share your knowledge and skills with other nurses as well and to encourage other nurses to apply. Next slide please. Okay, so hard work can be rewarded. And since I've started at King's in um, 2016, the things that I've done is help to develop the transition services by supporting, advocating um, for individuals and their family, um, initiating transition electronic care plans, um, moving transition clinics um, to a suitable area for young adults, transition workshops, support groups, and you know, throughout COVID, we've had support groups on Zoom and so on, creating YouTube videos, which I could share the link with, raising awareness and educating colleagues, which remains at the top of my list. And also I won the award last year, which is the pinnacle in my career, and I'm very, very proud about that. Next slide, please. So just to say, in summary, um, I feel as though I've given you a condensed um, like walk through my career there. You have nothing to lose by entering this prestigious RCN award, but everything to gain. You will be recognized for your hard work and why shouldn't you be? Um, you know, you get to highlight the work you do for your patients, their families and for your service. You, you know, your hospital gets in the spotlight as well because that's where you work. You know, you highlight the importance of your specialty and what you do, what it means to your patients and your families as well. You encourage and support your colleagues, so why not, why not showcase that? And you teach others to be like you, so you always strive for the best. So you too can be a winner of the RCNI um, category that you have entered, so I wish you all um, the very best. Next slide, please. This could be the result, and I hope to see many of you as I'm also a judge this year in the child health category. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank so, you, so. Thank you so much, Giselle. Um, I'm sure everyone can see why you've been won over 
um, why you won over the judges. Um, it's a fantastic project and so important. Uh, we're going to next move to um, our next speaker, which is Sandra Bennett, who was a finalist in the leadership category in 2018. And I'm hoping that she will demonstrate to you um, how it's not just about winning at these awards. It really is about the awards journey and um, showcasing your work. So we can share your practice. Over to you, Sandra. OK. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, uh, everyone at RCN, for inviting me tonight. It's always a pleasure to come through and speak uh, for you and with you and to my colleagues. Um, so I'm Sandra Bennett, as Elaine said, and uh, I am the lead nurse in sexual health. At the moment, I am uh, at Croydon University Hospital. Prior to that, I was at Bards. Um, and the London in East London. And I've been moving around sexual health services and transforming them. So I sort of labeled myself. If, if when people ask me, so what do you do? I say, I transform sexual health services in London. I'm the transformational nurse. So yes, I am a transformational nurse and I'm a transformational coach as well as a financial yeah. coach. I am also uh, a trainer and educator in my field of practice. And of course, I don't waste any time whenever I've got a minute to educate or share my knowledge with anyone, I do that. So I entered the wards in 2018 and um, I've always wanted to enter the wards. Ruth Ashikonlu is a very good friend of mine as a, and a colleague as well, and she would be entering all these awards. Did you see she won 16 national uh, health or care awards? Well, she was one of my inspirations to enter the wards because she was always entering a ward and I didn't know how to do it. And one and I, and I kept on missing the deadlines and stuff like that. And one night I, I, it was the night that it was going to close and it popped up in my email and was closing that night. I was on call and I decided this is the night. Thank God we didn't have any patients. And I sat down and I wrote it out. Now, why? And I wrote it out from my heart. I wrote up what I felt because that was my work. The very good thing about the, the, the nursing awards, the RCNI nursing awards, is that they about you and they allow you to showcase yourself. How many people do you know in our profession as nurses do amazing work and we are, a lot of their colleagues are aware of their amazing work and yet we don't know about it? The fantastic thing about the RCNI Awards is that they say you can enter yourself. And on that night, I thought, you know what? Nobody else is going to be able to tell my story like I tell it. No one's going to be able to tell where it began, the struggles and the challenges that I had and the successes that I had like I will tell it. So I sat down that night and I promised you it was must have been about half past 11 before the awards shut and I sent my awards and my awards entry in. And um, and like I said, I didn't really have to do the research because it was all in me. And when people, when I meet some of my colleagues or when I'm doing some people's appraisals and um, I said, oh, tell me about what you do. And even the other night we had one of the nurse of the year awards and she said, I, I never knew these awards existed. I, I Someone else nominated her and I'm, I'm so we are often so embarrassed about speaking about what we do and what we do so well. And um, I just say, who else is going to tell your story? And if you don't know how to tell your story and you don't know how to write an award winning entry, tonight we are here, Tara, Ruth, Giselle and I, and Elaine, we are here to say, if you don't know how to do it or you're feeling embarrassed about how to do it, you can contact us. You can contact us through, through, through the RCN and I want to tell you first and foremost, I will be ever ready to show you how I did it. I didn't win an award, but I was part, I was in the top five of the Leadership Award finalists. I didn't, award, I didn't win an award in that and in, on that night because actually when I sat down and I watched everyone in every top five to, 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 um, category, every single one was a winner for me. And every, every time they announced that person's work, I would say that's the winner, that's the winner. So much so that my son said, mom, actually you don't know who's the winner because everyone on the night is a winner. 
And even though I didn't win an award on that night, I can tell you that the value that the RC and I placed on the work that I did, they were so excited about showcasing it and speaking to the judges, I would say, so what was it that I needed to do to just get the edge? And they said, actually, you did enough, but it's a hair's breadth between all those winners. So you actually almost can't tell them apart. And it's, you know, it's a matter of what's happening on the day. And so, um, uh, so yes, yeah, so, before the awards and and before the awards, the um, judges supported me or the, the the team, the awards team supported me so much to 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 get prepared for the awards, for the interviews I was going to have, for the press coverage I was going to have, the radio coverage I was going to have. But what these awards really do for you, if you don't know yet, it just showcases what you got. What they also do for you is increase your confidence and your competence. And when you enter awards like this, you actually set yourself a benchmark, a standard that you're now in the forefront of everybody and you have to practice at the highest standard. And like uh, Giselle was saying, when you know something and you educate your, your colleagues and you're all doing the same thing, at the end of the day, when our patient is at the center of what we do, we are all producing a fantastic standard of work. Tonight for all the people in the audience and tonight for all the people in the audience and their friends, we just want to encourage you to showcase what you're doing because nobody else is going to do that for you. And also, not only was I a finalist for the for the RCNI Awards, I was also a winner for the NHS Leadership Academy Awards. So sometimes in the season, different kind of organizations, it may not be your turn to win. And in other organizations on that particular season, it is. And what Ruth and I have learned in one of the, in one of the, the programs we were on is that you may be the only one who entered, or it may be just two of you who enter that category, do you know what I mean? But don't think that there's a lot of people entering and you're not gonna enter because you will sit back and think, I do such amazing work and no one's seen it. So tonight I'm gonna show of my award as well. I'm at work at the moment, so I have my award in the office, and uh, this is one of my awards that I have in the office. And uh, when people come in here, they read it, they, they they admire it, and I say, "Hey guys, you can do it too." So um, uh, for that, uh, for just entering the awards, like Ruth said, I've done podcasts with the RCN. I've uh, I've written an article on financial education for nurses. I have also been featured on a very, on a major feature for the Black History Month uh, on the work that I did. It was a four page article in October 2018 and you saw that on Ruth's uh, presentation. So that is me in a nutshell and uh, just go ahead, take the plunge and we will be there behind you. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, always a joy to hear your enthusiasm for our award because I think you're nearly as enthusiastic as me. So thank you very much. Um, we're going to um, move to um, qu a few question and answers. Um, I'd like to introduce Tara Matari, who's joined our panel um, to answer questions. Um, so um, a very, very um, Warm welcome to you, Tara. And just to kick us off with our questions, I would like to ask you how how was your experience being our Nurse of the Year 2019? Thank you very much, Elaine, for um, inviting me. Can you all hear me? Um, thank you. Um, the RCN Awards changed my life, and I cannot really put it in words what it has done. I've always had an unwavering dedication to my career and an overall success in the NHS. And one of my proudest moments came in 2019 when I was awarded the RCNI and the leadership, the RCN Leadership of the Year, Leadership and Death of the Year Award to the improvements I made in my profession. As they say, dreams do not come, do not become reality through magic. It was sweat, dedication, and hard work. I can proudly say my hard work took me as far away as Australia. 
I was able to share the work, further develop my expertise with like-minded people. I was able to network, share good practice, locally, nationally, and internationally. I never thought in my life I would be able to say this. This is something I used to read in the papers and see nurses achieving. I never knew that a person like me would be able to do it. Although the experience has largely been positive, as a nurse from a BME background, I've had experienced challenges. But the RCNI award helped me to navigate through resilience and determination with the most important quality which it has shown me is that never give up, Tara you can do it. No matter how the journey may seem, you can do it. I've met people like Ruth, Sandra. I've read about them in our journals, in the RCN journals. I never thought I would meet them and have an interaction. I never thought I would be on the same platform as them. I met the Prime Minister, Joris Bonson. He mentioned me in his speech of Black History Month last year. To me, it is a blur, but I'm proud that RCNI has put me on the platform I've only dreamt about. I'm very humbled and grateful that the RCN has given me, the RCNI has given me this opportunity and the knowledge. And I have had fabulous time since I've won this RCN award. I've had access to the chief exec and the chief nurse which I've only seen at a distance or heard about them or seen their pictures, but to be actually be in the room with them and they're asking your opinion, that is an achievement beyond anything else. And that was made possible because of the RCN Awards. I'm not only saying this, I've been a nurse for 30 years. I started my training in 1991, 1990. And it's only after I've won the RCNI Awards, but I realized how good I am because they made me believe in myself and they gave me that exposure. After the awards, I'll share this with you. I was on the train when my picture was on the Metro paper. I didn't realize that. And people started pointing at me on the tube. And then I realized, okay, it's me on the paper. And people were coming to me and saying, congratulations. I work in East London, and I meet my patients on the street, on the high street when I'm shopping, and because they've seen me in the newspaper, and because they've known that I've won the RCN Nurse of the Year Award. It was in 2019, but it's like yesterday. And thank you very much for giving me that opportunity, and thank you, Elaine, for inviting me to be able to share my story. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Tara. It's a pleasure to have you and um, hopefully your story will inspire um, those attending this workshop to um, webinar to enter themselves. So we'll move to the questions. Um, we've got a few from the floor and a few sent in. So our first question, who I think I will go to Ruth um, as one of our judges. Um, can we nominate ourselves for a piece of work we did and we think has made an impact, especially during the pandemic. Ruth, over to you. I will say a big yes. In fact, that's why I talk about us blowing our trumpets. In fact, some of the nominations we get, it would be it would have been better if people nominated themselves. As Sandra said, nobody can showcase your work as good as you. But also when you uh, put your nomination in, just focus on who you serve, the difference you made to them, uh, how seamless you made care, how you improved services, the teamwork, you know, the collaboration that went into what you did and the difference you made, especially during the, uh, the pandemic is what I would say, because Many places closed down, but our services never closed down. In fact, we had to embrace innovation like we've never embraced innovation. A few years ago, using digital technologies, even all these webinars we're having would have had to be in person. And that's what you've done with your service. So whatever you did, 
way beyond the call of duty to ensure those you serve, your patients, your clients got a better service, continuity of care, all of those things you need to showcase. And that's best done by you. Because sometimes we get a nomination with the, uh, yes, we could see, but the person is not doing you justice. So unfortunately, that doesn't get, you know, put, you know, put through. So please, please, please get used to celebrating yourself, your achievements, putting yourself forward. Blow your own trumpet. No one can blow it as good as you. You know, if you went to an orchestra, that's why I used that a concert. And, you know, the person wasn't blowing the, the instrument well or playing it well, you will say, goodness, what was that about? And I paid money and I wasted time. So please blow your own trumpet. Put in an award, set a deadline, see when the deadline is and get starting tonight, tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, another question that's come in this evening, um, which I will answer quickly as it's a bit more um, about the um, judging and the categories. Um, if you are an academic working with students, does this apply um, or is it only clinical work? Um, I think at the beginning, um, I, meant what, I meant what I said, we are about celebrating the real diversity of nursing and what nurses do. And that can be in any setting. Um, and we have a catch-all category, which is called the innovations in your specialty, where um, working with students would certainly fit into that category. Um, but yes, please don't be put off um, thinking that it's only about clinical work, but it, because it isn't. Nurses do so much um, and we have structured the categories to make sure that we can capture um, everybody who wants to shout about what they are doing. So please don't hesitate, get, get your um, entry in and look at the innovations in your specialty category. Um, one question that we were sent in before the webinar tonight was um, about interviews. Are there interviews? And if so, will we present in person? Well, we will be doing our face to face judging um, by um, webinar, by, by interviews, virtual interviews again this year. But it's it's not scary um, and we will help you through the process. So. Giselle, that was your experience this year, and I just wondered whether you could share some of your experience um, um, about how that process went. Thanks, Elaine. So um, initially, I was really scared about having the interview, but the support that I received um, from like Rosie in the RCN office was remarkable. Um, there, there was so much information, there was so much support that on the day of the interview, um, I felt really calm about it. I felt supported. There was tech support, so Rosie was on hand if I had any problems. I sent across my presentation so that it could be shared properly. So in the event that I had a problem sharing it from my screen, Rosie was a backup for me and it went so, so well. I, in fact, could not believe that it actually went so well. There were no hiccups, there were no issues, and I felt as though I was actually in a room with all the um, judges because I could see everybody on the screen. Everyone was so welcoming and it was a really, really good experience. I think if you're going to go for it, don't let this stop you. Go ahead and go for it. It will be a great experience. Thank you. Thanks, Giselle. Um, we have um, another question um, from one of the attendees this evening. Um, I had a look at the categories and there's no category for nurse educators. So is there a way to enter, please? Again, I would look at um, the innovations category because I think you'll find that you will fit perfectly into that category. Um, and question four, have, have the nominations already started? Yes, entries are open. Um, and so we would suggest that you get working on it straight away. Don't hold back. Um, and another question that was sent in before before the webinar this evening. Um, any tips from successful candidates about how they put their entry together? Um, Sandra, you nominated yourself. Um, can I come to you for this? Thanks.
Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, Elaine, thank you. I was actually thinking about that point a moment ago when you said, uh, uh, you know, when the question about have the nomination started already. Um, we don't have a lot of time. The closing date is the 7th and I am a bit of a maverick. Uh, so and like I said, I knew my story. I knew how to tell my story. Uh, however, don't wait till the last minute. Uh, well, you, the judges will tell you as well, because you, you, you've got to check your grammar, you've got to check your, your um, uh, that, that your message is coming across as authentically as you want it to come across. Ruth was telling you the different things you want to focus on, your why, uh, who are you doing this for, what differences has made, and all of that. And sometimes you can't put it through in a, in a, in a few hours on a night shift, like I did, just be, I was walking and talking my story all the time, but the, we got a short time span now. So the sooner you get started with your with with your application, and the sooner you get help from people who know how to read it, the better your application will be. And like Elaine was saying, that they do receive a lot of applications, but because of the poor quality of the presentation, the 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 the, the entry loses out. Um, so what the what the RC and I have done in in helping you enter your your work is that they've put it in different categories. So you don't need to write a long essay that is not focused. So there are different categories about what is your what's the name of your project who was involved in it how did you do it where did you do it why did you do it so those different kind of categories uh, and the difference it made and the results and the outcome you achieved those categories really really help you to tell your story so i hope that was helpful thank you Sandra. thank you um Ruth, I know you wanted to um, add to some of the previous answers. So if I come to you for some, we're running out of time. So if I come to you for some closing remarks um, and then we'll we'll sign off. OK, thanks, Ruth. Yes, I just wanted to say that people should think laterally. So yes, there's the innovations category, innovations in your specialty. However, there's also the team um, there's one for team of the year so if you work very rarely do we work by ourselves as educators so you could put uh, a team uh, nomination yeah. through or you could think of any of the other areas even the leadership one how you have led during a challenging period ensuring that students get the best experience possible uh, how you have to, had to quickly adopt digital technologies you know to just stand out so you could use any of them but you just probably have to think differently and go through the questions is what i wanted to say but we're looking forward to lots of nominations and to seeing your nomination i'll hand over to you because we've only got two minutes uh, left elaine so you could uh, run through your last slide OK, thank you very much, Ruth. I do want to quickly run through this slide. I've spoken to um, a number of judges and asked them what exactly do you think are the key points, takeaway points for anyone attending um, this, this webinar? So the first is um, you have to enter to be seen, put your work forward to be celebrated and um, so others can learn from it. Be proud about what you're doing. Take proper credit for what you have done as well as acknowledging your team's input. Um, make sure you show the impact. Describe how the initiative has improved care, nursing practice, or even the profession itself. And finally, evidence. You have to prove your impact. So show your evaluation, whether it's an audit, whether it's a um, it's patient feedback, participatory evaluation, um, just make sure that you include it. So I'll leave that with you to take away. Um, I very much look forward to reading your entries. A huge thanks to Sandra, Ruth, Tara and Giselle for giving up their time. Um, you'll see Rosie and my, the event manager, Rosie, and my email on the screen. Please get in touch if you've got any questions and um, good luck and I really really look forward to um, reading about your amazing and brilliant and your amazing nursing work so good luck <laughs>